Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Love Talk Radio. We have 30, okay. Bites. I hit bites. 20. <laughs> 10. Okay, give me the five. There's three, two, go. It's the top of the hour on Go Harrison, and I'm Mercy Malik with your reality check. The Iraqi defector whose lies about weapons of mass destruction helped fuel the invasion of Iraq is finally openly and publicly admitting his role in the deception. The UK Independent confirms that Rafid Ahmed Alwan al Janabi, codename Curveball, will appear in a two part BBC Two series entitled Modern Spies, scheduled to begin airing today. In it, al Janabi reportedly admits to having completely fabricated his reports and sketches of Iraqi mobile biological laboratories. He was, of course, far from alone in the effort. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, General Colin Powell's former chief of staff, recalls that al Janabi's sketches were not sufficiently convincing, so he, quote, brought the White House team in to do the graphics. Intelligence was being worked to fit around the policy, end quote. The nine-year war took an incalculable financial toll on all nations involved, not the least of which being Iraq itself, as well as claiming the lives of over 100,000 people. It's one minute past the hour. Data collected last week at the site of the Fukushima nuclear plant show radiation levels inside the number two reactor to currently stand at up to 10 times the fatal dose. A spokesperson for Tokyo Electric Power Company admitted that conditions are so harsh inside the containment chamber that the industrial endoscope used to gather the data would only last for 14 hours, necessitating the design and creation of new equipment that could tolerate such an environment. Perhaps most disturbing, the number two reactor was the only one studied because radiation levels in its reactor building are the lowest out of the three reactors which experienced meltdown. The Associated Press report. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Rufal laugh. I just, it was the Mr. first Harrison. good news I've had in a year on that. Oh my. The Associated Press reports that radioactive water has leaked from the plant into the Pacific Ocean several <clears throat> times in the past year, including a fresh leak just last week. An overwhelming percentage of Japanese citizens now oppose any nuclear power and have successfully pressured government officials to take all but one of Japan's 54 reactors offline. It's two minutes past the hour. And finally, file this last story under, might you want to rethink that? One of the lead plaintiffs challenging President Obama's health insurance mandate has been forced to declare bankruptcy because of medical bills. Yep. The <laughs> LA Times reports that Mary Brown, who volunteered as one of the plaintiffs in the suit sponsored by the National Federation of Independent Business, is not exactly the only one to see health care costs contribute to a bankruptcy. Almost two out of three Americans who file do so in whole or part to overwhelming medical bills. She might, however, be the most hypocritical. Brown reportedly defended herself by claiming that the doctor and hospital fees had been incurred not by her, but by her husband. She also now claims that she, quote, never said medical insurance is not a necessity, end quote, except for that pesky part where you're the lead plaintiff in a lawsuit <laughs> stating pretty much exactly that. Okay. But other than that. Right. For Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7, I'm Mercy Malik. You can follow me on Twitter at The Actual Mercy. And this has been your reality check. For details on all these stories and more, go to innworldreport.net. Smart starts now. GoHarrison.com. What's new about Tiger Woods? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Elvis Presley. OJ Simpson. Abandon Bates. Order now. Harrison. Harrison. Talk show. Random. Political. Outrageous. Philosophical. Analytical. Passionate. Hideous. Sunsets. Roadkill cooking tips. Open-minded. <laughs> Swordsman. Bent. <laughs> Resolute. Chocolate. Bushwhacker. Belt buckles. Investigative. Companion. Fearless. Call in. Piercing the cloud of mainstream entertainment. From Los Angeles, it's The Smart Show with Harrison. And 
it is, <coughs> Mr. Haney. And it is four minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. Welcome, welcome to Go Harrison. We are going to have so much fun today that I am horripilating in anticipatory delight. delight. And if you are anything less than that, if you don't have some kind of nerve endings and hair follicles standing in full erection at the end of your goose bumply flesh, then you are simply not tuned in yet. And I suggest you leap over to your Motorola and turn the knob somewhere to the left. We have today uh, really a star-studded bacchanalia of fun. And one of the things that I just love doing is bringing on very bright minds to help us reverse engineer the particular hell and mayhem that we find ourselves caught in. As you heard just moments ago, Mercy gave us the first good news we've had in a year, that there were only three nuclear power plant meltdowns in uh, 20 square feet of each other, and that one of them had actually fewer particulates leaking deadly radiation to the residents of Earth than we had thought a week ago. So, in fact, uh, one or two tuna fish may survive this after I'm all. sorry, I, I should be clear. There's ten times more than they thought. Oh! Right. Well, okay. But that's then the one invert that, that. Right. That's the one that's the least <laughs> dangerous. The least dangerous out of the three is emitting ten times more radiation than previously suspected. Yes, yes. And, and one of the I'm things... I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry to be a I downer. Yeah. I, I was actually trying to live in a perpetual fantasy... <laughs> That, um, you know, I like Ron Paul, if you get cancer or ill, as he points out, it's up to you. And people right. should worship Ayn Rand, who lived around the corner, by the way, as we come to you live from mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe's former apartment. Ayn Rand had a place right around the corner, which is a small shrine for a self-loathing gay guy that lives there <laughs> and worships on uh, some kind of knee or... Uh, prosthetic knee um, to the homage of Ayn Rand and I hope eviscerates his genitalia or does something appropriate as the uh, further homage to her. I had to restrain myself yes. from mentioning her in the last story, by the way, because she, of course, is another person who famously rallied against health insurance and ended up taking public assistance at the end of her life to... Only care. for the entire end of her life. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. We, I'm sorry. we don't want to overplay that. That was unfair, yeah. <laughs> well, let's get right into it. We have a still surviving in 2012, a few politicians that actually care about the residents of Earth here. I know it's shocking. I know it goes against everything you've seen on CNN, but apparently it's quite true. And one of whom is a name that will not be uh, unfamiliar to you. That would be Tori Osborne. And these are people who want to continue the good works of Sheila Kuehl and others and uh, uh, occupy <laughs> California in all the right ways and continue to create something that might feel kind of like a plebiscite, that might look a little bit like a movement toward democracy. I know, it's crazy. It's like, let's go back to Eisenhower, but pretty much, let's go back to Nixon. Let's go back to something. And a lot of people are still willing to do the heavy lifting. So we have him with us right now, apart from pure genius, apart from pure entertainment and pure amazingness, but also a guy who actually cares about other people, and that would be none other than Bruce Valanche. And Bruce, Hi. how many <laughs> millions of times did I get to enjoy you in Hollywood Squares? Uh, While I sat <laughs> in a Midwestern television set watching, <laughs> going, my God, Earth is bigger than I thought. <laughs> were you, is that why you were watching it? Uh, yeah, probably. I, I'm not sure where, but I didn't it's, live here yet oh, yeah, no, when you were doing that. No kidding. But, but what you did, Bruce, and what you still do now, is you talk about stuff that other people simply can't see. And I think that's the benefit of being an amazing comedian, is mm. part of your training, part of your <laughs> discipline, part of your vision, is that you can see through the box that the culture builds, yes. and you get to look right through it and tell us what's on the other side. The man behind wow. the curtain, naked or not. Yes, well, hopefully naked. <laughs> Otherwise, why does he have a curtain? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, let's take a quick second and talk about Tori Osborne, because you, on Thursday night at 7 p.m., along with Lily Tomlin, along with Hal Sparks, and we're going to give away some tickets here shortly for that yeah. event on Thursday night. All Good. three of you are going to be performing uh, to help Tori Osborne get into Sacramento right. to uh, be the saving grace. The, the, <laughs> the Can you believe that she wants to move to Sacramento? Well, that part this, I haven't talked to her about. A high-functioning lesbian from the west side of L.A. <laughs> wants to move to Sacramento. 
I mean, right away, that's a reason to vote for. Well, I know, and there is Fresno next door for that gay Saturday Exactly night. right. That glamorous, <laughs> exactly, a two-step And if you dancing. really want to go for it, I think Bakersfield is mm. the great... That just, just to throw, a, a mere stone's throw away. Uh-huh. Right, country music capital. <laughs> so, for... Not there, Bakersfield. We, we've got a lot of people that are under the age of 30 who yes. won't really understand why this is so important that you... Uh, a well, I mean, you write the Academy Awards, you wrote Bette Midler, I mean, right? It's, you, yes. you have seen Guilty and done on all counts. literally everything, uh-huh. right? So they're not going to necessarily understand why do we even care about politicians anymore? My God, they're all corrupt, they're all awful, they're all terrible. But Tori Osborne is not that. They may not really understand why is she special. Well, she's uh, was at the forefront of... For those of us who were gay, she was at the forefront of the gay movement uh, when when it didn't really have m- much of a front, <laughs> not even and not even a four. She was <laughs> she was in, in their original or exactly. Well, that was that was cut by you know my rabbi friend. She <laughs> she she was running the LA Gay and Lesbian Center, of which I am a board member. But she was one of the original uh, people running it. I mean, she was there at the very beginning. Yeah. So she was. Uh, she was uh, fundamental in getting the gay community organized into a gay community it, where, where it was formerly a bunch of people who liked to go out dancing. Uh, she was one of the people who galvanized everybody and, uh, and made a political movement happen. And when she left that, she started the Liberty Hill Foundation, which was um, uh, organized to work with, this sounds so cliche, but to work with the downtrodden. And they actually did. I mean, uh, you, you couldn't get in there unless you actually had proof that you had been trodden upon. <laughs> You had to have footprints in a was, downward motion. In a downward, exactly right. right. And there was, you know, it was the CSI lab. There were they would measure, actually, which motion, which <laughs> range of motion <laughs> that the uh, step had been applied to. So, but I wouldn't imagine anyone would particularly stick out in West Hollywood that way, would they? Because they walk all over everybody. Absolutely. Is that it? Yeah, and it also it's part of the fetish community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's so that's San Francisco. That's big time. Fetish. You want fetish? Go to San Francisco. That no, that says big time. Trying to cut down on enuresis yeah. and all kinds. Really? Of other, yeah. Oh, oh why? It's such, f- oh. such fun towards the weekend. Caprophagia, <laughs> chrismophilia, oh. mycophilia. My favorite. To him. Oh, that, yeah. Deriving oh. erotic pleasure from soiled undergarmentry. And it's and mice have nothing to do with it. It's just it's just a Latin um, mistake. That that's the name of it. I think so. I yeah. think so. We're talking to Bruce Valanche. You know him uh, so famously from Hollywood Squares. Everybody oh, yeah. and anybody who grew up uh, when we had three networks, right. <laughs> yeah. really telling the stories. And, yeah. and, and now we have social networks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And they and they say nothing. <laughs> it's just you know the blog for the evil. It's just bitch please over and over and over again. Bitch please. <laughs> But we got off the subject of Tori Osborne, which is which is what I'm doing this benefit for on Thursday, and I, and I, I just I didn't want to leave people hanging with a joke. The fact is that she's she's running for the uh, California Assembly, and what is very important for gay people is that we have gay politicians. Yeah. You may have a very low opinion of politicians. I, I certainly have a mixed opinion of them. But the fact is we need to have our own in there because that's the only way we're going to advance the, the notorious homosexual agenda, which, <laughs> by the way, is world domination by 2011. So we're behind already. <laughs> so Queens, get just, with it. I just want my house redecorated. Can I now get Now that? that's <laughs> a no-brainer. <laughs> I mean, you holler out this window. You know, you're in the middle of West Hollywood. Excuse <laughs> Does anybody have a shins sofa? And you, know, you, you, won't hear, you won't hear yourself with the thunder of the hooves as they come running towards your apartment. However, I, it's very important, I think, that we get good gay politicians, people who are actually working working for, for our, our causes, for our issues. And uh, Tori is one of them. But in addition to that, she's, she, she'll represent everybody, as all the good gay politicians have, like Barney Frank, like Sheila Kuehl, right. uh, um, you know, like Tammy Baldwin in Wisconsin. All of them represent all the people. And the reason they keep getting reelected is because they're very good at that, because they come from a minority that was never represented. And so they are bound to determine to see that everybody gets represented. Harris, That's why we're having it. We are talking to Bruce Valanche. You know him, six-time Emmy Award winner, head writer for the Academy Awards, 
uh, since 2000, also written for the Emmys, for the Grammys, for the Tonys, for Comic Relief, uh, known Jeez. by younger audiences and older ones for being on Hollywood Squares. Uh, you were yeah. really very much my introduction into this box that I might now check called Other, which <laughs> I, I happily and bravely now check. Yeah. And if it weren't for you and others who walked the path before and said, come on, the water is warm, and it really does get Whoa. better. Mm -hmm. Now, now I want to qualify this whole notion of it really gets better. It really gets better if you do the legwork. It really doesn't get better if you sit in Ohio somewhere in the middle of hell and do nothing mm -hmm. and uh. wonder why you're endlessly being bullied and then throw <laughs> yourself in the middle of it. It really gets better if you move to an urban setting. I mean, there's actual stuff that we all uh, have yeah. to do. And one of the cool things about politicians like Tori Osborne and others, it is an act of Herculean bravery to come out and be a politician as you. Yeah. It's different to be Larry Craig and tap <laughs> three times yeah. in the men's room stall <laughs> While simultaneously publishing the super tuber recipe in the congressional cookbook. Mm -hmm. And the super tuber is one of my favorite dishes, by the way, Bruce, and I'm sure you've cooked it many times for your birthday. I think guests. I've probably eaten it raw. Uh <laughs> It is Larry Craig, as, as you recall, who has taught us about the other gay agenda of. Um, uh, pedophilia as opposed to pedophilia uh -huh. yeah. using your feet. Right. And knock, you, three times <laughs> knock three times on the stall door <laughs> if you According want me. According to his personal recipe, Bruce, you take a baked potato and you bake it until it's really warm and soft in the middle. Yeah. And then you drive a hot dog right through the middle of it. Baby. That is the super tuber <laughs> recipe. It's, uh, who has strength left to eat? <laughs> So I think when you're brave and congruent with your nature and just come out and say, look, I really don't mind doing the work and I really want to work hard and I really want to do it as me, that's not easy for a lot of people. Yeah. Didn't the Greeks and the Romans and all the great philosophers, whether it's even Proust or Nietzsche or Kierkegaard, talk about that our whole life struggle is about figuring out who you are and what that means to be that. And if you can actually become that and then go be of service, mm -hmm. I think you can end up being a real superstar, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't think any of these people do this thing as, as the, the, their first uh, item of uh, on their coming out agenda. I think these are all people who have been out for a while and who know exactly who they are. And that's just their, uh, their being. And this, they're now just applying themselves to this other task at hand. So it's not, I mean, while, while I say that she's, uh, it's important that we have gay politicians, I don't think that she's saying that to herself. I think that she's saying, this is what I want to do. I want to represent people. And it's not because she's a lesbian that she wants to represent people. It's not because she's a woman that she wants to represent people. It's because she's a human being and she's passionately interested in, in the welfare of others. And she wants to have a hand in all of that. Uh, I use her particular her particularness as a woman and as a lesbian as positives because I think we need more of that kind of representation. You know, the country was started two hundred odd years ago by a bunch of white guys who had slaves, and it's been a slow but steady progression to where everybody else is represented in the decision making process. And this is just one more step in it. Since she happens to represent my group, I'm of course in her corner. I would probably be in her corner anyway, because she is an exceptionally well qualified candidate. Absolutely. And and I like bringing up this side because I learned a while ago, I am not preaching to the choir necessarily with this audience, mostly open-minded people, but this thing blasts through Orange County and other places, for whom uh, the notion that somebody actually is born that way may be a foreign object in their philosophy. <laughs> so I find it often helpful to remind people what X and Y chromosomes yeah. are and how stuff works and that the only part that was an actual choice was Larry Craig and his super tuber. <laughs> the rest of it happens naturally in nature. We're talking to Bruce Valanche. You know Bruce famously from the Hollywood Squares. You know him as the writer for the Academy Awards. For the block! For the win! Right, right. Uh, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Well... No. I did. I did. I, I, my name isn't on that movie. I did a lot. I've done a lot of doctoring work 
on various films. And Wikipedia decided to make up a whole bunch of stuff. I love Wikipedia because, first of all, <laughs> well, nice they, they invented my age. Well, they, they shaved a year off my age, which I didn't correct them on. And then they put in a lot of other stuff that I thought was hysterical. That was like, you know, anybody can kind of log in and, and, and type whatever they want, you know. So it's, um, uh, I, I never look at, at, at it. I looked at the entry once and I was shocked to discover that I was married for many years to Betty Hutton. But, yeah. <laughs> we also have a coming up on Thursday night, Lily Tomlin, who I see is yeah. blinking, blinking on the phone. So coming is up. Is she one ringy dingy one ringy, in? Actually, more like 80 ringy dingies, and I've oh. been very rude. So we're going to get to you in just a moment, Lily. We're talking oh. to Bruce Valanche. We're also going to be talking very shortly, in just a couple of minutes, to Lily Tomlin, who is also performing as a headliner on Thursday night, and that's mm-hmm. at 7 p.m. at the Directors Guild of America, the DGA, yes. all of this. And Hal Sparks. And Hal Sparks. Who used to live in this building as well. In this he lived building? in this very building. Really? He's yes. been in here a million times. Never he never it. said that? Well, no. he's moved on. He's a private guy. I think, you know, yeah. I, he probably has moved on. I've been to his place in Venice, and it didn't have uh, the same vibe. Well, you know, he, he went metal <laughs> after he left West Hollywood. <laughs> he, he certainly did. He's, We're also going to open up the phones at 310-737-TALK. 310-737-TALK. Those are your Harrison hotlines. We're going to give away a couple of pairs of tickets so you can go see Bruce Valanche, Lily Tomlin, Hal Sparks, all coming up this Thursday night to support a great progressive like Ter- uh, Tori Osborne. And uh, we're going to continue, and we're going to talk to these two amazing people. Take your calls and continue. But first, we're going to have a little live and local traffic from Jeff Thomas. And uh, I believe I will push a button. To make that Joe Harrison. There we go. Completely unsponsored common sense commuter traffic. <laughs> It is 21 minutes past the hour. This is your Go Harrison live and local traffic report on KPFK. Let's get started in Hollywood on the 101 South. Traffic is slow all the way from Sunset Boulevard to the 110 freeway. Northbound lanes are also slow from the 5 to the 110. In East LA on the 10 westbound at the I-10 freeway, there's a crash that block in the center lane. Speaking of the 710, it's going to be a slow drive all the way from Long Beach. Oh, that's northbound side, all the way from Long Beach to the 405 freeway. Finally, in Downey, on the 5 south, traffic is slow and go from the 605 to Norwalk. Northbound lanes are also stop and go from Valley View to Florence. And again, from the 710 to the 10. For Arizona, I'm Jeffrey Thomas on KPFK 90.7 FM, Los Angeles, 98.7 FM, Santa Barbara. <laughs> JoeHarrison.com Harrison's Hellraisers I am Clint Eastwood and I'm a Harrison Hellraiser (laughs) You got that? Okay Harrison (laughs) Hellraiser I see the gas prices rising Scope of pop culture and politics. It's the Smart Show with Harrison. Peering through the proctoscope of pop culture and politics. Uh, I vote yes for that one. I want Clint Eastwood to record that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, 
That's not going to happen. As much as I would love that, too. Last. It is 24 You're minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. You are listening to Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles, 98.7 FM in Santa Barbara, 93.7 in San Diego, 99.5 in Central California, and a couple of affiliates throughout Europe, also on the Progressive Radio Network. We're talking right now to Bruce Valanche. You know him. Everything from the Hollywood Squares to the voice behind the Academy Awards, at least the the times when you're laughing <laughs> that would be because of his fine work and we're also going to open up your phone lines at 310 737 talk 310 737 talk so you could talk to bruce and also we're going to give away some tickets so that you can see him lily tomlin hal sparks this coming thursday night at the dj dga in order to support tori osborne as uh, Bruce flicks my plasticized flowers With there. little plastic water droplets on them. Yes, I like to think of them this as, is, as a... Absolutely. This, there's a miniaturist at loose. Permanent <laughs> botanicals, or PBs, as we call them in the business. It's always like it just rained on them. Just, Dewey Fresh. Dewey Fresh. Now Remember we have, him? We have Lily Tom. He ran for online, Congress years ago. But I think she had to drop off. There what? she is again. She's coming back Lil's in a back. second. She's ringy dingying. She you has, think she, of all people, would have a certain oh expertise no. with the telephone? That, but they've sabotaged her phone for years. <laughs> you know, there was just, oh, we'll show you. We'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take care of your phone, your connection, sister. We are live streaming, live video streaming at GoHarrison.com. So you can see Bruce Valanche at GoHarrison.com, oh where God. this will be available tomorrow oh. on DirecTV, on Dish Network, and, of course, on Ustream, and on our site, GoHarrison.com, as a podcast. So you can have Bruce in your smartphone in perpetuity, Eek. looking at him over and over oh, and over again, which yeah. I know is what you want. I would have shaved. <laughs> I didn't know. If it was radio, I could be a total slob as opposed to my usual slob. L- let's talk for a second. And there's Lily again. All right. All right. We're, we're now going to, uh, with enormous success, bring the great Lily Tomlin on. Yeah. And Lily, you are on with Harrison and Bruce Valanche. Welcome. Well, thank the Lord. Okay, listen, uh, I heard you, but I heard you all talking about my ineptness with the phone instrument. <laughs> no, no, we were talking about the phone company's relentless ep- efforts to sabotage you. It was all, it was totally my fault. Totally my fault. <laughs> I, uh, I just. I couldn't handle the equipment. That's all there was. Are you still on the Bell system over there? Today I'm on the cell system, and I had to borrow another person's cell because I was I left my cell at my last stop. Oh, Uh-oh. So how are you? And I and I could hear Bruce talking before. I mean, yes. Bruce is you know he used to answer his phone on his machine with benefits are us. <laughs> so true. It's I mean, true. there's never a time when Bruce will not respond to a a worthwhile uh, need for someone to entertain and make everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, and Lily, likewise you, uh, you know, Tony Award winning, five-time Emmy Award winning, 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 I'm, winning. Are you there? I'm there. Do you yes, hear us she, at all? she dropped out momentarily. <laughs> okay. And this Lily, you're, anyway, we're here, we're here talking about the event on Thursday, am I right? Yes, we are. For, for Tori Osborne, uh, for her candidacy for the Assembly. Yep, and we're going to be giving away a couple of tickets to that, by the way. And you are going to be uh, up there with Bruce and Hal Sparks. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to do a little bit, yes. And I, these are both uh, Hal's, Hal's wonderful, too. And, of course, I, Bruce is one of my great loves. No one knows that. I already have his image on my cell phone. <laughs> and, that's really what keeps it's me true. Of the time. She, she, does, she doesn't need mace. Can, she just whips out the phone what? when she feels threatened. She doesn't have to carry mace anymore. It's just, here, look at this. Yeah. Oh, please. Oh, Bruce. I know. Anyway, just, and, and, uh, it's a low self-esteem it's attack. Great, it's going to be a great uh, great evening, I yeah. think, because they're, they're both so funny. I know. And we should point out that Tori Osborne... I'm going to model a bathing suit, but that's what that's <laughs> what oh. <laughs> Which is the main draw. I think, <laughs> actually. Yeah. A whole new demographic has opened up. Right. We should point out that Tori Osborne is not related to Ozzy Osborne. Or or any other oh, Osborne, yeah, yeah. or yeah. any other... Yeah. I think it's important yeah. to say that, because, you know, in the mass media, when you say Osborne... 
Yeah, someone needs to clear it up. Yeah, okay. you, you know, you're right. If you say you're doing a fundraiser for the Osbournes, yeah. it has yeah, a whole different... I said, I'm doing the Osborne campaign, and someone said, they're running for something? <laughs> now what? <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Well, Lily, well, I, I personally, I've known Tori for over 30 years at least. Oh, wow. But I believe yeah. I've known you longer than that, haven't I, Bruce? You, we, have, we have about 40 years we're chalking up. Yeah, we well, are. I think, we're, I think, I we think are so, yeah. 40, 1970, least. something like that. Um, but I, yeah. I met Tori not, uh, when I moved out here in 75. I think she was at the center, or, or they were starting the center. and, um, and uh, she, yeah, So I've she, known her a long time, too. Yeah, but I've known her since that time too, and that's when that's when yeah. the center was the about the only organization that was doing anything for HIV, mm -hmm. and that the true. clinic got started. And it was one of the biggest and the first. It, was. it still is the biggest, actually. This, this yeah, and it, it set the roadmap. Yeah, I mean, it is still the biggest. Yeah. It, it allowed a, a template to be set for the rest of the country, saying that this is actually real. It actually mm -hmm. can be treated, and it actually can be treated pu publicly right. in the middle of a city. Yeah. So, I mean, all the voices that got together, and, and yours mm -hmm. in particular, in so many ways, Lily, uh, have made this thing now a medical issue that can be treated. And that's a whole lot of lives that get saved. How, how as comedians, both of you, do you get interested in politics? If all we did was watch television, we would think that all you guys did was just sit around and think things are funny. But the the state <laughs> of the earthlings here sometimes has a little less humor, but it's the people with humor that are able to get the mainstream people interested, it yeah. seems. Yeah. I, I think uh, it's... Well, I guess... Go ahead. That's, that's, um, that's rather true, Harrison, in a lot, a lot of ways, but... Uh, you know, it's done all, all kinds of ways. People write books. People write articles. People are activists. People march. They do all kinds of things. And But because there are so many issues and so many things to march and write and make, try to make humorous and and understandable, that you need a lot of different people doing it. Yeah. And, I mean, my God, Tori has worked, you know, not she hasn't only worked at the Gay Center and all the gay-related issues, but she's also worked... Uh, I'm living wages and immigrant rights, and and uh, she's worked with homelessness and poverty, and she worked with the United Way, and now she's working on tax taxes and fiscal reform. Uh, and she got me to write in, jokes in for County. She got me to write jokes for Antonio what? Villaraigosa. She was working in the mayor's office, <laughs> and she called me up oh, and she yeah. said Villaraigosa needs some jokes. And I thought, well, since I'm always getting his mail because my name is very close to his. <laughs> And they would yeah. they would Bruce seat us Valanche. they would seat us alphabetically Valanche and Via Ragosa <laughs> and this is how I got to know him and of course he is very very cute I'll man of, you, of a at, Latin persuasion at, at so I wanted to get to know him so I'll bet. he got jokes at Gay Pride last year you probably were even there at the uh, the mayor's mansion or whatever it's called yeah. downtown uh, you know he may as well have just come out. It's know, not his wiring, but I, I was know. thinking, Jesus, if I acted like that. Oh, listen, this guy gave twenty five grand out of his own pocket for marriage equality. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is again is a fight against Prop Eight. I mean, this is, he's and, solid. And he's former ACLU. He's, uh, I mean, yeah, he's the exactly, real deal. Exactly. But I wanted to just say about Lily that Lily has always been a very political comedian. Uh, it's been subversive. I mean, her characters always have a position, but it's not overtly political. I think it's uh, amazing that in this day and age, the Republicans are so sad that they pile on Bill Maher as if he really represents a, a, a point of view. I mean, as if he's formally representing a point of view. He's a comic making jokes about Sarah Palin. But somehow the, the Republicans think that this is... A, a political attack by a politician. Uh, they are, they're so desperate. They have nobody to, to lash well, out I at. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, yeah. but, uh, you know, a Bill, Bill, just, Bill gets better and better. I mean, because on his show, he does some wonderful uh, essays and brings up a lot of stuff that is, of course, some of it's uh, flat out funny and a joke, mm -hmm. but it's still a lot of content. I, I always look forward to seeing what he's going to say about something or just the fact that he can bring enough humor to it brings people's attention right. to stuff may not be um, 
the total perspective, and John Stewart's the same way. The, right. the perspective that they yeah. offer. Is and and let's let's explore that in just a moment. We have to pause for news right now. Lily, would you like to hang on, or do you are you available for a few more minutes? Well, I, I'll tell you, I I would like to hang on, but I've got this person's phone, and she's standing <laughs> waiting for really? me to give it to her. In the checkout line at Walmart, yeah, waiting. Is it somebody you know, or is it a friend? <laughs> It's, an, it's a stranger. I've been, she just, I've, been able, I've been able to capture quite a few Walmart photos while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> That'll I'll teach her to ask oh, for an good. autograph, right? <laughs> oh, good. I sense an expose coming. <laughs> Documentary. Can I, can, I give, can I give you both a big kiss and tell Bruce I'll see him on Thursday? I'll see you Thursday. And I'll see you too, Harrison, I hope. You will. I'll be the one backstage lurking. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you so much, Lily. I'll bring you a turkey roll or something. I okay. will. Take lots, of love. <laughs> lots of love Bye, to honey. you too. That, of course, is Lily and Tom. Sell those tickets. We need that money for the to run a good person for the assembly. All right. We're right. going to give away tickets right here, right now. We've just been talking to Lily Tomlin. You, you yeah. can text right okay. now three ten seven three seven talk. 310-737-TALK. Send a text and we will give you a pair. We will get you on Will Call. Give us your name and your telephone number and we'll get you on Will Call for Thursday night, 7 p.m. to be able to see Bruce Valanche, Lily Tomlin, Hal Sparks, and we'll also be giving away another pair of tickets a little bit later on. But right now, without further ado, it's News with Mercy Malik. Harrison. News News Hey, Bruce. Yeah. Harrison, news Can time anybody is... hear me? Uh, everyone can, uh, <laughs> including the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> pause, pause for one moment, Lily. <laughs> All right. Go Harrison News Time is 35 minutes past the hour, and I'm Mercy Malik with your reality check. In these troubled times of high unemployment, what would you do for a job? Would you surrender your Facebook password? Because that is apparently a trending request amongst prospective employers. The Associated Press reports that public and private agencies nationwide have begun asking for unfettered access to job applicants' social media accounts, including all private messages sent by a Facebook, Twitter, and the like. Fortunately, enter Democratic U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut. The Huffington Post reports that Senator Blumenthal is challenging the practice as a, quote, unreasonable invasion of privacy for people seeking work, end quote. The senator is drafting a bill to curtail such requests, which he points out to be effectual mandates. In the words of Internet privacy law professor Lori Andrews, quote, volunteering is coercion if you need a job, end quote. It is worth noting that Democratic California State Senator Leland Yee also intends to introduce legislation here in California to combat such requests as well. It's 36 minutes past the hour. In other local news, demonstrators rallied outside the lot at Formosa yesterday in an attempt to save the historic film and now television production studio's original structures from demolition. The lot began its life in the 1920s as Pickford Fairbanks Studios, the very first movie studio to be owned by a woman, the pioneering Mary Pickford. The LA Times reports that the property, situated at the corner of Santa Monica Boulevard and Formosa Ave in West Hollywood, is slated to lose all of its original wooden office buildings and sound stages, and all of the history that goes with them, to be replaced by six-story glass and steel structures. Hmm. Demonstrator Chad Michael Morris said, commented, quote, They need to preserve this place not just for West Hollywood's history, but for cinematic history as well, end quote. The city of West Hollywood has already approved the demolition, but protesters intend to appeal to the city of Los Angeles since several of the imperiled structures straddle the boundary line where WeHo meets L.A. If you feel similarly saddened by the situation, get involved. It's 37 minutes past the hour. And finally, a last word on job seeking. If you're unemployed and you might just want to get in line to punch this guy in the face, the Austrian Times reports that 56-year-old long-term unemployment benefit recipient Hans Earl was so disdainful of the work opportunities afforded him by his local job placement office that he deliberately sawed off his foot. Yes, his own <laughs> foot. Above the ankle and then threw it in his oven. All so that he could wow. continue to receive unemployment benefits unabated. Earl called emergency services only after verifying that he had burned the foot sufficiently to prevent reattachment. He was subsequently airlifted to a hospital where he underwent emergency surgery and was placed in an artificial coma after almost dying from loss of blood. 
A police spokesperson said that the incident is being investigated as an attempt at suicide, but a spokesperson for the aforementioned job placement office commented, quote, This is a tragic case, but it will not help the man. Losing a foot does not automatically mean he will not be able to work. He will be assessed once he is out of the hospital, and we will see what work we can find for him, end quote. They are going to find some work for this crazy man. People of America who are desperately searching for work, answer me this question. Wouldn't that be nice? For Go Harrison on KPFK, 90.7 Los Angeles, 98.7 Santa Barbara, 93.7 San Diego, and 99.5 Ridgecrest, China Lake, I'm Mercy Malik. You can be my friend on Facebook and send me news tips for your reality check. News update. Harrison. 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 We have got to work together. Poppycock. To uh, eradicate poppycock. To eradicate poppycock. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, I'd call it crap. Crap? Huh? I wouldn't call it crap. Crap? Yeah, crap. Oh my goodness. What's going on? Blow the whistle. We have a problem. Poppycock. 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 You're in control of your life, not the government. The government's not dictating how, what you, how you do things. You are laughing out loud at the president. It's a sad situation. Too much poppycock here in Washington, D.C. Poppycock, poppycock, poppycock. Disassemble. Is that the uh, verb you used? Disassemble. That means not tell the truth. Don't! From Los Angeles, this is The Smart Show with Harrison. And it is 40 minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. Welcome. You are listening to Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7 FM in Los Angeles, 98.7 FM. Santa Barbara, 93.7 in San Diego, 99.5 in Central California. We're talking right now with Bruce Valanche. Bruce, you know, from the Hollywood Squares. Bruce, whom you see right now in live, technicolor, streaming, high-definition video. As exciting as it is to see my video. High def? We are high def. Oh, it's the enemy to everyone. (laughs) No one looks good in high def. Please, Zach Sunsets. Efron looks sad, sad, sad <laughs> pale, Have you ever sallow. seen him from the waist down in high def? Oh. Well, not high enough. <laughs> <coughs> Hack wheeze. That's all I can <laughs> say. Hack wheeze. Hack wheeze. Uh, we're talking about really sort of that curious place where art and real life intersect and how politics and pop culture and the life in which we live and how it often takes people with a comedic bent to be able to explain the inexplicable to us since so many of us are stuck here on this orb with the official story and we're supposed to cope with the official story and often people like Bruce who have for so many years so extemporaneously and so brilliantly on say Hollywood Squares for instance how we're used to <laughs> and I and I say that because we're used to s- reality shows, which are yeah. allegedly unscripted, but we know they're all completely scripted, at least all mm-hmm. but four minutes of them, probably. But Hollywood Squares, was that mostly extemporaneous? Uh, it was a balance. Um, we we gave people jokes, who, people who we thought were funny. We gave jokes, and, and they were, you know, joke answers to the questions, and, and uh uh, and some people used them. And then there were also people who were just naturally funny and extemporaneous. The best stuff was the stuff that happened spontaneously. Although, you, know, you go in there armed with a bunch of jokes and you know that you're, you're sort of on firm ground. I mean, we could never give anybody the real answers. Because if we gave them the real answers and the contestants knew, they would just agree with them all the time and there'd be no game. And it was a game show. So, we, you know, nobody could know actually what the real answer was. And a lot of the answers you know, were, were, not re- were not even real. I mean, they were questions like... When, what, what does Joyce Brothers say it means when you uh, the, when the stewardess smiles at you? You know, uh, or, I mean, it was, it was like who knows? Joyce doesn't know the answer to that question. It was that it was made up from the outset, you know. But um, I forget what I said it meant. It was like you're leaving the aircraft. I know what that's what it was. It was when a woman smiles at you, you're leaving the aircraft. But it was that kind of crap. All all they could do was agree or disagree. And, so I, I appreciate the brilliant comment. Uh, sometimes it, it went to the level of brilliance, but a lot of times it was just funny stuff. Well, you know, interestingly enough, today, with the threshold of naughty language, blue language, yes. sounding like our grandmother here, um, it, it would have a whole different tone. Well, it, it will. Would, you know, there's a new the, – their MTV is bringing on the hip-hop squares. Seriously. Really? It, I saw that. Yes, it'll be on MTV2, and Fabulous. it'll be hosted by Nick Cannon – Who's Mariah Carey's baby daddy mm-hmm. and husband, and uh, and is also I think on America's Got Talent. I think he hosts America's Got Talent, so he'll be hosting it, and there'll be a whole bunch of uh, rappers and hip hoppers, and so we will see it being on MTV too. They can probably go just so far because it's 
basic cable that's got sponsors. If it was on HBO, it could be like Bill Maher or Def Comedy Jam. But uh, it'll be fun to see what the, what they get away with when they're doing this thing. Because, you know, it's it's like an, an ancient format. So to see all of these, you know, rappers playing <laughs> tic-tac-toe. <laughs> Well, Sorry, it's, it makes me laugh to think about it. That's that's where we're at today. Let's open up the phones. Your Harrison hotlines are 310-737-TALK, 310-737-TALK. Let's say hi to Matt in Topanga. You're on with oh, Harrison and Bruce Valanche. Pass Welcome. the bud, Topanga. <laughs> Topanga, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. One of my favorite hey, Bruce, canyons uh, from the old days. <laughs> Oh, well, it's still a lovely place to be, so come on up. <laughs> um, I was just going to ask you, do you think that Rick Santorum changed his name in order to attract more log cabin Republicans? Where did he change it from? <laughs> oh, I don't know, something that wouldn't <laughs> Smith. be that was, that was a uh, uh, cause what You mean frothy? You mean he wanted <laughs> he, he wanted to buy into that? I don't know, but I will tell you the Rick Santorum joke of the day. The Secret Service has signed on to guard him. This marks the first time in his life he's used protection. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. You'll sell that one to somebody at the comedy store walking in the door. I don't know. I didn't didn't know if he changed his name. He may may have changed his wardrobe. (laughs) We can only hope. (laughs) <laughs> it is 45 minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. You are listening to Go Harrison live video streaming right now at GoHarrison.com. We do maintain a 24-hour video channel as well. We're going to be upping the game, and starting about a week or so, we're launching version 3.0 of our website that's going to have a lot of bells and whistles, stuff you've been asking for and stuff that we can thank uh, Billy Foster directly for having put some uh, a, a buttload of uh, backbone and muscle behind <laughs> to create. We haven't yet seen it yet, but in advance, I'm saying yes, thank you so much. And that will, of course, incentivize him to do an even better artistic job. Isn't that how that works, Gr- it, I love incentivize. <laughs> this is I've never heard that expression before. This will incentivize you. Um, please make a note of it. <laughs> I think that, yeah, that involves a perfumed candle. In it's good. Yeah. It's good. It's, a, it's, another, it's another verbalization, literally, of, uh, of a thought. Now, we gave away uh, some tickets to the Thursday night event, and uh, that, those are already well handled. We're going to give away another pair right now, and all you have to do is text your name and your telephone number to 310-737-TALK, 310-737-TALK. It must be by text, if you don't mind. We're kind of modern here. It also allows us to keep impeccable digital records so that nothing naughty, nothing untoward is likely to happen without a full Google record of the event. So that's 310-737-TALK. That's a pair of tickets for two Thursday night to see Bruce Valanche, to see Lily Tomlin, to see Hal Sparks live at the DGA at 7 o'clock. And that, of course, is ultimately supports Tori Osborne, who is really dying and desperate to get up to Sacramento to start a new life amidst tractor pulls. And, uh, <laughs> She's absolutely looking for a bean dip. She, really, she wants to go there. And and she wants to get a paddle wheeler and just work the river. We're also uh, opening the line. So you could talk to Bruce Valanche yourself, and that's 310-737-TALK, 310-737-TALK. And Bruce, having been in this business, what, 40 years? I saw you on a cruise ship, what, about a year and a half ago, I think. An Atlantis cruise. Yes. Not one uh-huh. where anyone was buggering a porthole. Ah, and I'm still well. trying to understand. The just they, Not in a port, that's all. <laughs> well, on I'm, the high seas, maybe. <laughs> but. I want to know how that's possible. Having seen the portholes in these ships, yeah. anyone who can do that deserves a pair of tickets without having I to think text so, in. Really? If you've yeah. buggered a porthole, you've got a pair of tickets <laughs> well, for Exactly. You, you porthole bugger. <laughs> this is your moment. <laughs> Ahoy there, land, <laughs> land lover. Well, the best part, though, was watching the local CBS station. I really meant to play the audience. The audience play the audience and the audio uh, simultaneously but the reporter used the word buggery and bugger well you know that was the official charge well i know that but i mean if there was a charge i don't even know if they were charged but but. it's suddenly we go from the uh the station that follows you know kim kardashian's slime trails down the sidewalk (laughs) to these highfalutin oscar wilde type 
putting on a white powdered wig and talking yes. about buggery. Well, it's so incongruent. It was a beautiful moment. I, it was, and it was uh, it was facilitated by the the courts in Dominica, yes. which which use that expression because there's a British. Inf- a British residue from from so colonial horror, days, yes. as it were, and and that's one of the things. I mean, you wouldn't see any U.S. port uh, accusing anybody of that, but it's a, it's a particularly British phrase, and so they were allowed to use it because it was in quotes. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, under normal circumstances, they wouldn't say somebody was arrested for buggery <laughs> <laughs> at the Coral Sands Motel. Well, I know it's like circa 1958, P.G. Woodhouse or something. You know, it's some wonderful ancient arcade idea of buggery. I know. Which exactly. is, you know, goes against the crown. I mean, this is really yeah, naughty. I know. And really naughty. And it's probably where we got you bug me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet it is. I'll bet it is. I'll bet it's not for mosquitoes. And sirens as the Here perfect audio bed. Exactly right. To go to they're, the phones. They're hunting down them buggers. <laughs> Let's say hi to uh, Prophet in Santa Monica. You're on with Harrison. Welcome. Prophet! Hello! Hi! Pro- Prophet saw the future yeah, and left. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, the professor, I'm a professor of it, uh, etology, the Internet to account. Anyhow, uh, the feds, apparently, the DEA agents have uh, uh, busted uh, Oaksterdam up in uh, College Oaksterdam in Oakland. I just wondered what Obama's trying to do. They need all the uh, left-wing liberals. But this is quite serious. He's been cracking down quite a bit on the... Um, Use of medical marijuana. So, Oaksterdam up in Oakland has been busted by the feds. I don't know if you folks are aware of that or not. And I'd like your comment. I'll take it off the air. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I ha- actually had not heard of this, so I can't. I, I think I heard something about offer, it. Obviously, but... offer same as you, Bruce. I heard something about it, but I was too stoned to really register what it was. <laughs> uh, once it clears up, then I'll, I will get into it. Okay, news as of one hour ago yeah. is that, uh, that's why I'm here with my little laptop, um, Oaksterdam Marijuana School in Oakland has been raided by the feds a few hours ago, apparently. Uh, I don't- uh, just because... There, they felt like it. Apparently, uh, the warrant was sealed in federal court, so we don't know exactly what their impetus was for the raid. Mm-hmm. The school was founded in 2007, and it offers classes in the chemistry and growing of marijuana, methods of ingestion, and a class on the legal issues concerning cannabis, which I hope they studied well on because they're going to need that knowledge themselves. Now. Yeah. Well, odd that you should have to study that. <laughs> I thought that was intuitive for most so of us. So it's not a dispensary. No. This so is this, is something, this is something. This is something else. This is. So they found a workaround. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They found a way to, to to nail them because they probably would have pot on the premises, and that's still illegal. And um, there's something at work here, but we don't know what it is. It's probably also tied into, you know, the dispensaries would all be hooked into the school in one way or the other. Maybe this is where their client base comes from. But it's quite clearly a proxy for going after the dispensaries themselves, yeah. which would be hideously un- unpopular. Right. But we yeah. can explain the scholasticism having been brought yeah. down because defunding schools, in quotation marks, well, that's right. doesn't seem to be uh, such a problem these days. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This is probably the reason. Oaksterdam University sponsored the 2010 ballot in Initiative to legalize recreational marijuana use in California. Oh, that probably left a little residue oh. of irritation, so okay. to speak. With right. the feds, though, not clearly not with Jerry Brown. Mm, no, so, this, but it, right. Uh, I mean, you know, this so was this a federal bust. A federal so, bust. Yeah. Well, you know, they're a whole other animal. Fifty-two minutes past the hour. Harrison, with you. You are watching and listening to Go Harrison on KPFK ninety point seven FM in Los Angeles, ninety eight point seven FM in Santa Barbara, ninety three seven in San Diego, ninety nine and a half in Central California. We're talking to Bruce Valanche. Bruce, you know him as the writer for the Academy Awards for Comic Relief. Um, uncredited in Raiders of the Lost Ark, thanks to Wikipedia. <laughs> um, the Related to Richard Milhouse Nixon, uh, daughter of <laughs> Catherine Hepburn. It's all in Wikipedia. It's all there, yeah. Exactly it's all there. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and Bruce is performing on Thursday night, along with Lily Tomlin and Hal Sparks at the Directors Guild of America, and that's at 7 p.m., and he's come on to uh, not only talk about why it's important to support uh, decent politics if you want to have a world in which you actually want to live, 
but also just make himself available to have a little fun, a little visit. And so we're really grateful for that. And we got a full set of phones here, Bruce. So let's oh, go baby. to another one. Say hi to Roger. And Roger, you're on with Harrison. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Harrison. I have some uh, comic material for Bruce uh, for his uh, stand-up show. You know, there's uh, Santorum and uh, New Gingrich, all these evangelists. They are crazy about three things, uh, not necessarily in this order. First is uh, oil, then their hatred against Muslims, and thirdly, God. And how come their God in the Middle East, he has given all the oil to the Muslims and not a drop of oil in Israel? <laughs> well, as a, as a Jew, I've been saying that for the last 60 years. Where did we... Exactly. And we cut off the end of what? And we have these commandments? And, you know, it's, and there's no oil in the desert. Exactly. And by so, the way, feel guilty about it. And feel guilty. Exactly right. Feel, so I, I totally understand. It's, it's, it's a great conundrum. Thank you so much, Roger. Thank you. Awesome, Thank you awesome thing to offer here. 310-737-TALK, your Harrison hotlines. 310-737-TALK. Looks like we've gotten all our uh, tickets handled here. Thank you, everybody. we got a million texts. And the first few of you, of course, are the winners. We thank you for that. We'll be getting back to you later this afternoon. Let's say hi to Ken in Pine Grove. You're on with Harrison and Bruce Falanche. Welcome. Hey. Uh, I think uh, we need to support Tori because uh, she reminds me of Tori Amos. We need to perform with her just to get rid of that confusion. <laughs> Good. 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 Well, yeah, ever, and, ever since uh, ever since Tori stopped dyeing her hair with carrot juice, it was fine. There you go. Yeah, uh, the serious question is, of course, if we took the the center out of the nuke at San Onofre and just, you know, stuck it in the trash... How much wind, solar, and wave energy would it take at that location to replace that wattage? So do that number and yeah, tell we'll, everybody we'll about get it next right week. on that math thing. Bruce also yeah, happens mm-hmm. to be a chemist. Yeah, a I don't know, but I can tell you, Hunger Excellent. Games did sixty-one million at the box office last weekend. <laughs> But that, that's okay. a very good question, right. and I will take that on as a task to find out for you right. for next week. Pamela Anderson's current measurements are <laughs> 43, but they'll change over the weekend. Thank you, Ken. Not not a, a crazy question at all. I mean, Santa Nova no, is yes. scariest. Santa, 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 the, the, I the, we have were, no idea what the answer is, we, but, but it's a, a legitimate it's right, question. Had, had uh, um, uh, Ed Asner and um, Mark Rydell in here a couple of weeks ago, and I had done a 9-11 event with him which are wonderful to do, that the dialogue is able to happen in a public space, Mm -hmm. unlike uh, teaching how to grow a joint in San Francisco, not allowed (laughs) in a public space. But we were there, but what happens is, you know, somebody like Ed, who's been around for many decades, out there doing the good work, people start to assume he's also a scientist. Because if he's there for a 9-11 event, and one guy said, so what kind of thermite was used to bring down the left quadrant base of Building 7 at an altitude of this and a temperature of that? For 100, Alex. Yeah, right. (laughs) And, you know... Ed, Ed's not a scientist. He's not a chemist. But that's going to happen to you guys because you do put your out, yourselves out on behalf of the other people. Mm-hmm. And I think we forget because your expertise is wide and varied, your humor is wide and varied, your perspective is wide and varied. We start to assume on this side because we don't have the answers, especially you in Hollywood yeah. Square, you're going to know this stuff. Yeah, but it's a stretch that somebody like me who writes fart jokes is going to know all about <laughs> San Onofre and, and the wave displacement. I mean, really, that's a stretch. You know, even for Kobe Bryant, that's a stretch. <laughs> and seriously, though, for the caller, I thank him for that question, and I will try to find the answer for you. It's an interesting tie-in with what's happening in Japan right now because when you have yeah. a country that used to have 54 functioning nuclear reactors and they've shut down all but one in the space of the year, mm-hmm. obviously the lights have not gone out in the nation of Japan. Mm-hmm. So they're finding a way to work around it. They which, sure are. And we are so out of time. Mm-hmm. Lily Tomlin, Bruce Valanche, Hal Sparks, Thursday night, 7 p.m., DGA. 
Thank you so much, everybody. Live streaming at GoHarrison.com. Thank you, Bruce. Thank, Thank you. you, Mercy. Thank you, Gio. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Yay. We will see you next Monday. <laughs> Harrison. And don't Go forget Harrison. to hack and wheeze really, your way exactly. into an orgasm. Slim brought to you by Harrison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>Hour on Go Harrison, and I'm Mercy Malik with your reality check. The Iraqi defector whose lies about weapons of mass destruction helped fuel the invasion of Iraq is finally openly and publicly admitting his role in the deception. The UK Independent confirms that Rafid Ahmed Alwan Al Janabi, codename Curveball, will appear in a two part BBC Two series entitled Modern Spies, scheduled to begin airing today. In it, Al Janabi reportedly admits to having completely fabricated. What I love doing is bringing on very bright minds to help us reverse engineer the particular hell and mayhem that we find ourselves caught in. As you heard just moments ago, Mercy gave us the first good news we've had in a year, that there were only three nuclear power plant meltdowns in uh, 20 square feet of each other, and that one of them had actually fewer particulates leaking deadly radiation to the residents of Earth than we had thought a week ago. So, in fact, uh, one or two tuna fish may survive this after I'm all. sorry, I, I should be clear. There's ten times more than they thought. Oh! Right. Well, okay. But that's then the one that, that. Right. That's the one that's the least <laughs> dangerous. The least dangerous out of the three is emitting ten times more radiation than previously suspected. Yes, yes. And, and one of the I'm things... I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry to be a I downer. Yeah. I, I was actually trying to live in a perpetual fantasy <laughs> that, um, you know, I like Ron Paul, if you get cancer or ill, as he points out, it's up to you. And people right. should worship Ayn Rand, who lived around the corner, by the way, as we come to you live from mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe's former apartment. Ayn Rand had a place right around the corner, which is a small shrine for a self-loathing gay guy that lives there and <laughs> worships on uh, some kind of knee or uh, prosthetic knee. Um, to ...fabricated his reports and sketches of Iraqi mobile biological laboratories. He was, of course, far from alone in the effort. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, General Colin Powell's former chief of staff, recalls that al Janabi's sketches were not sufficiently convincing, so he, quote, brought the White House team in to do the graphics. Intelligence was being worked to fit around the policy, end quote. The nine-year war took an incalculable financial toll on all nations involved, not the least of which being Iraq itself, as well as claiming the lives of over 100,000 people. It's one minute past the hour. Data collected last week at the site of the Fukushima nuclear plant show radiation levels inside the number two reactor to currently stand at up to 10 times the fatal dose. A spokesperson for Tokyo Electric Power Company admitted that conditions are so harsh inside the containment chamber that the industrial endoscope used to gather the data would only last for 14 hours, necessitating the design and creation of new equipment that could tolerate such an environment. Perhaps most disturbing, the number two reactor was the only one studied because radiation levels in its reactor building are the lowest out of the three reactors which experienced meltdown. The Associated Press report. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Rufal laugh. I just, it was the Mr. first Harrison. good news I've had in a year on that. Oh my. The Associated Press reports that radioactive water has leaked from the plant into the. For details on all these stories and more, go to innworldreport.net. Smart starts now. JoeHarrison.com. What's new about Tiger Woods? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Elvis Presley. OJ Simpson. Abandoned baby. Order.
Harrison. Harrison. Talk show. Random. Political. Outrageous. Philosophical. Analytical. Passionate. Give me the sunsets. Roadkill cooking tips. Open minded. <laughs> Swordsman. Bent. <laughs> Resolute. Shockman. Bushwhacker. <laughs> Belt buckles. Investigative. Companion. Fearless. Call in. Piercing the cloud of mainstream entertainment. From Los Angeles, it's the Smart Show with Harrison. And it is <coughs> Mr. Haney. And it is four minutes past the hour. Harrison with you, your new best friend. Welcome, welcome to Go Harrison. We are going to have so much fun today that I am horripilating in anticipatory delight. delight. And if you are anything less than that, if you don't have some kind of nerve endings and hair follicles standing in full erection at the end of your goosebumply flesh, then you are simply not tuned in yet. And I suggest you leap over to your Motorola and turn the knob somewhere to the left. We have today uh, really a star-studded bacchanalia of fun. And one of the things that I just... Pacific Ocean several times in the past year, including a fresh leak just last week. An overwhelming percentage of Japanese citizens now oppose any nuclear power and have successfully pressured government officials to take all but one of Japan's 54 reactors offline. It's two minutes past the hour. And finally, file this last story under, might you want to rethink that? One of the lead plaintiffs challenging President Obama's health insurance mandate has been forced to declare bankruptcy because of medical bills. Yep. The LA Times reports that Mary Brown, who volunteered as one of the plaintiffs in the suit sponsored by the National Federation of Independent Business, is not exactly the only one to see health care costs contribute to a bankruptcy. Almost two out of three Americans who file do so in whole or part to overwhelming medical bills. She might, however, be the most hypocritical. Brown reportedly defended herself by claiming that the doctor and hospital fees had been incurred not by her, but by her husband. She also now claims that she, quote, never said medical insurance is not a necessity, end quote, except for that pesky part where you're the lead plaintiff in a lawsuit <laughs> stating pretty much exactly that. Okay. But other than that. Right. <laughs> For Go Harrison on KPFK 90.7, I'm Mercy Malik. You can follow me on Twitter at The Actual Mercy. And this has been your reality check.